Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. I want to talk a little bit about faith. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to stop right there. It is the actual thing that you'll be able to see, not only in your life and the lives of others that follow God. When nothing else happens, that's what faith is all about. That is what faith is. It is the only thing that you can see. A lot of people don't serve the Lord today because... God didn't answer their prayer right away. I've seen people said, would you pray for me? And I prayed for them. And sometimes the healing didn't come for a few days. Sometimes the healing didn't come right away and they walked from the Lord and they went away sad. Don't go away sad. The prayer has been prayed. The prayer has been prayed. I want to go into Psalms 27. Psalms 27. And this is what we need. If you're going to have faith in God, you need to understand God. You need to understand Him. Sometimes prayer isn't answered for years. Sometimes prayer is answered right away. It's up to God to be able to answer the prayer. Amen? But it's up to you to have faith in that God. Now, if you stay in God and you stay around the people of God, you will be encouraged not only for the things that happen in your life, but the things that you hear happening in other people's lives. That's why you can't be a lone ranger. That's why you can't be separated from the flock of God because you will see God work in other people's lives that you will be very intimate with them knowing their situations and you will know in your heart only God could deliver them. You walk away with faith because they're being blessed and their prayer was answered. Their deliverance was there. If you're looking for your faith to grow and only in the area of what happens in your life, you will falter. You really will. You need to see an everyday occurrence with Jesus Christ in your life and in other people's lives. Amen? Now, David said, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me into a plain path because of my enemy or my enemies. What's the plain path? What is the, what is the plain path? That you believe in God and serve the Lord because of that belief no matter what. You walk with God no matter what. That's the plain path. That's the easy path. If you're saying, if God don't show himself strong to me in my needs... I will not serve him. That's not a plain, easy path. Because God has a time frame that he works by in everything in your life. Think about it. How did he make you? You didn't, you didn't come out of your mother running, did you? You crawled first. Many times that's what God does, even in your faith. You've got to crawl first. You've got to do a little at a time, a little at a time. And then you grow and you start walking and then you start running. Teach me thy way, O Lord, because of my enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemy. Satan wants you to falter. He really does want to drag your soul to hell. He really does, and he's working overtime. If you can just look at what's going on in different people's lives that don't serve the Lord or in different congregations where they've given in to darkness, I'll tell you, you can say Satan surely is alive and well. But it doesn't have to be for you. It doesn't have to be that way for me. We need not to be delivered over to our enemies. For false witnesses are rising up against us or against me. But this is, I want you to see in verse 13. I would have fainted. I would have fainted in my walk with the Lord unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living or in the church of the living. I would have fainted. Why? Because there is lifespans to everything. There is lifespans to even your prayer being answered. There is your lifespan. You're only going to live so many years and then you're going to check out. Right? There's lifespans to, to youth. You're only a youth for a, for a little while and then you become an adult. A lifespan to everything. Think about the problems in your life. Some problems in your life. How they were and you boohooed so long about them. And yet 
they became distant and over with. Life spanned everything. All good things come to an end. That's what Solomon said. He was a very smart man. Why was Solomon very smart? Because he said that he was going to, he said, Lord, give me wisdom that I may serve you. Amen. Give me understanding that such a great people that I would serve you. Why was God with Solomon? Because Solomon was with God. But even then, look how he failed the Lord. He married women that were not of God. He got joined with people that were not of God. And he became just like that. He would started to build temples to devils because his wives said, I want a temple to worship my God. And God told Solomon, don't you marry any women outside of the Jews. And yet he went to foreign women that worship other gods. And he became where he worshiped demons himself. Oh, wow, the smartest man on the earth was not the most spiritual man on earth. You say, well, I'm not smart enough to be spiritual. Yes, you are. You are smart enough right now. You're in church. David said, I would have fainted unless I would have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, this is the next verse. Don't ever faint. But he says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Why? So you press through and you get the victory. So you press through and get the victory in the time frame that God has it for you. See, God wants you to change. He just doesn't want you to be blessed. He wants you to be changed in the heart. And he leads you through a lot of fires. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He leads you through, he leads you through a lot of things. He throws you into the fire and says, you're going to come out a different person. Oh, Lord, bless me. Get me out of here. And he said, no, you've got to burn for a few days. You've got to burn for a few years. You've got to go through pure hell, and then I'll deliver you. Because you need to change. You need to change. Each one of us need to change. And that's why we go through the trials. But what you need, though, to take you through the trial is faith. God will deliver me. And you've got to see that. You've got to see that happen to this person, that person, and even little things in your life. You go, golly, that was God. God says, yes, I'm on your side. And I'm on your side in the big battle, too, that's going on in your life. Watch me deliver you. Well, someday we will all die. That's right. And for those who kept faith with the Lord, they will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And there's a great prize, and there's a great reward for that. There is no suffering. He wipes away every tear. You say, can you believe that? I believe it because Jesus said it. Somewhere along the line, we have to, have to put our foot down and say, I, how can I believe the world and what it has to offer? Things are just going, getting worse and worse, and people are killing one another, and it's like Sodom and Gomorrah around this, this world anymore. What would you rather believe, that there is a God and that he has a reward of heaven for you. And if you follow him and keep his commandments and keep his ways and put your hope in him, isn't that really better than any other way? Anyone can be a scoundrel. Anyone can be a person of no faith. Anyone can follow that. But only those who are full of God, full of the Holy Spirit, will keep the faith until the end. Remember what it says in Revelations, he that overcomes, each one of us must overcome. We must overcome. We must overcome the dirt of this world. It's pushed in your face. It's pushed down your throat. I don't care if you, if you turn on the, the TV and watch the news, you're going to see all this advertisements. Or You say, I just watch ball games. All, all the junk that's in between the ball games. It's tough. You're in this world, but you don't have to be of this world. But you've got to hide yourself. You've got to protect yourself. Amen? Remember Solomon. He thought he had a right to every woman, and he didn't. So David thought that too with Bathsheba, and he didn't. There's some things you don't have a right to, but you, this one thing you do have a right to is to God. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. 
Wait, I say, on the Lord and get the prize. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now in Hebrews, you have to run over there, but you can listen to me. Hebrews 11.6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, without this faith, you can't please the Lord. Without this belief that God will deliver you, God will change your life around, God will honor you. Remember Psalms 91, he says, I will honor you all the days of your life because you have known my name. You were very intimate with me. He says, I will honor you and I will lift you up. What parent doesn't want to be lifted up and say, yes, my kids listen to me and now their kids are listening to them. That's when it's time for you to check out, when you know that your children's children are hearing the word of God from your children. Now you can go home to the Lord. Paul said, I'd love to go to heaven, and I want to get out of here. But he says, it'd be wrong that I would die now, because he says, you still need me to preach to you. I'll sure be glad when I go home. You better be glad when you see the things happen that should happen before you go home. A lot of people say, I just want to die. You need to live. Now, let's go over into Hebrews. I told you not to go there, but I'm going to tell you to go there anyway. This is how faith works. It said here in Hebrews 11.21, By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both sons of Joseph. By faith. You know what he knew? He knew that he had a blessing inside of him because his daddy had a blessing inside of him. Isaac blessed Jacob. He knew that the blessing of God was coming down. You have a blessing inside of you to part to your family. How precious is it that grandpa prays for the grandchildren and imparts a blessing? This is what happened. Grandpa Jacob blessed Joseph, his son, his children, and he imparted a blessing to him. He couldn't have done that if he wouldn't have believed he had it inside of him to do that. You have a blessing inside of you. You really do have a blessing inside of you. What is that blessing? You have a family blessing inside of you. That God has blessed every man, every grandpa, with a blessing. Every grandma with a blessing. That you can impart that to your sons and daughters. There is, a ble- there is a blessing that comes down. There is calls that come down through a family. There are, there are um, things that a family has. Some, some are able to play music. Some are able to... Uh, t- talents. There is different talents in different families. But I'll th- tell you this. There is, diff- there is spiritual talents also. You might be a, a mechanic where you work on cars and you, you run a place like Fairford or different places like that, but spiritually you got a call and a blessing that you hand on down to your children. Personal blessing that you hand on down to your children that only you can give them. Only you can give them. And if you don't bless them with that blessing and you don't bless them, they will never be blessed. And they could die in the wilderness of their faith walk. Oh, they might be present in the United States someday, but what's that if you lose your soul and you gain the control of the whole world? What good is it? What good is it? What good was your life if you don't get into heaven with your children and and hundreds maybe behind you? You might not be called to be a pastor, but you are called. I want to go into Joshua. I want you to see something. 
Joshua was blessed because he served the Lord. And what did God say to him? In Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. And he says, therefore, arise and go over to the Jordan with all these people. I gave them this land. And he said, verse 3, every place that the sole of your foot sh shall tread upon, that I, that I have given you, just as I told Moses. And he says, in verse 5, I'm going to skip on down, there shall not any man to be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I with, was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee or forsake thee. Everybody quotes that verse. Everywhere my foot treads, God, the Lord has given it to me. A lot of faith, faith preachers claim that. But the one thing that they do fail to do is the only reason Joshua had victory is because he served the Lord too. He served the Lord. He served the Lord by leading the people. He served the Lord by leading the people. You will ask yourself, how am I serving God? Do I even serve the Lord? Do I even serve him in any capacity? Well, I pray to him. I, I believe in him. No, that's not serving the Lord. That's God. Actually, you want God to serve you. What, po what, what part do you actually turn around and start serving the Lord? So I'm going to show you the great men of faith here really quick. And this is what he says. Be strong, Joshua, and be of good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide an inheritance. My people. Remember? Solomon? Why was he the smartest man? Because he said, give me wisdom to govern your people. And God says, because you didn't ask for wealth or me to deal with your enemies. How many have an, an enemy they want? God to deal with how about an ex you know we call them exes how about some of those you know oh God take care of that ex how about forgetting the ex amen whatever the ex is ex <laughs> marks a spot that's a spot you want God to go for how about if you just how about if you just forget about the ex and think about God amen, amen. how about that and God says, that X will never be able to get to you as long as you serve me. I will be with you. He says, be strong and of good courage. He says, out of divine inheritance for this people, only be strong and very courageous that thou may observe and do it according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or the left or anything like that. Paul says, even, Paul even said this. He says, even after I've preached the gospel, that that if I would fail God, it, he says, I will be cast forth as a reject, as a castaway. You know, fish, when they sort them out in a net, they look at them, oh, that's a small one. Oh, we keep the big ones, we get rid of the runts, go back into the water, make something to yourself so I can catch you again. But they kept the big ones. That's what Paul said. He said, even after I preach the gospel, I gotta watch myself that I'm not a castaway. What do you think he was talking about? He had to walk the walk too. That's why he, keep, he keeps the ways of the Lord. But the thing I want to focus on is you doing for God. You doing for God. Are you a teacher? Do you teach? Do you, are, you have the ability to govern things. Some teachers can't govern anything. But you can govern churches. You can govern body of Christ. He said this is how it should, needs to go. We see Moses had a great, as a great person of God, but who had to give him wisdom? Was it not Jethro? Jethro says, Moses, you can't do everything. You got to do it like this. And he wasn't even a high priest of the tr one true God. He just had wisdom. Amen? He said, Moses, you got to do it different. You got to hire people to have it done. And that's where we get, we get our... Our, our federal government and their local governments and stuff like that. Everything's handed on down from the county to the townships. I wrote this down here this morning and it says your walk with the Lord must be coupled with the service to God. Must be. 
You can't have one without the other. People will say this, well, if you don't walk with God and you don't do this, I don't believe you were ever really saved. Say what you will, but nevertheless, the two go hand in hand. The two go hand in hand. You will not have the ear of the Lord with your prayers unless you have service to God. Think about Noah, how he saved his whole family. And what was his, what was his task? Save all the animals. It wasn't to load up everybody he thought was righteous. He said, hey, two of every kind. I'm going to destroy the earth. Get it done. So he worked for over 100 years building the boat, building the ark. And what was his, his, hey, when you get tired working at the circus, think about Noah. So what do you do? Well, I shovel all day long. Noah, the animals, Joshua, God's people, King Solomon, still God's people. It's all about God's people. Jesus, was it not, I was sent here? Son of man be lifted up, wasn't it all about God's people? Really? Peter and the apostles, was it about God's people? Or was it about them? Was it really about them? Did they all go home? They didn't go home. They left their nets. They left their nets. You have a gift inside you. You just got to ask God. And God's probably been showing you anyway. He's probably been showing you what your talent, what your gift is. He's been putting your, it in your mind already. It isn't about receiving. It's about giving. And the receiving will come. Amen. God, if you'll just answer my prayers, you wait so long. Serve the Lord. How can I scream it in your face? Samuel was a great prophet. Oh, God, make me a great prophet. He says, serve my people. That's what it was, Samuel. How about David? Serving God's people. So, in uh, chapter 25 of Matthew, God talks about the talents. One was given five, one was given two, the other was given one. God wants us to use the talents, amen? What happened to the guy that hid his talent? You all have a talent. You all have a talent. Don't hide your talent. You want your prayers to be answered. You want God real in your life. You have a talent. Some people were born with a talent. Some people say, I don't even have a talent. I don't have anything I can do. Can you scrub the floor? I can, I can. Scrub the rug. And God says, if you'll be faithful over the little things, the earthly things, I'll make you faithful. I'll make you, I'll give you a spiritual thing to be faithful over. Because you're faithful over little, I'll give you much to be faithful and you, that's the kind of person you are so I want to go into 1 Corinthians because I only got a little bit of time and you might want to mark it down in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 this is what God says because it's in the Bible we had it last week was it last week we had a little saying because it's in the Bible why do we believe what we believe because it's in the Bible now he says here now uh, 12.1 now concerning spiritual gifts brethren I would not have you to be ignorant because there are spiritual gifts that you know that now now there are I'm going to go to verse 4 now there are different administrations of the spirit are there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit they are different of administration but it is the same Lord now I'm going to go to verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given and I want you to underline this to every man to profit everybody around you. And it says to profit with all. Everyone. But the manifestation of the Spirit of God is given to every man. That locks you in to a service of God that it's no longer you, but it's God doing it through you. But if you do not take that talent, whatever that talent is, and everybody's different, but God will show you, and you hide that talent, God will not be pleased with you. You can talk grace all the time. You can talk grace all day long to me, but you hide your talent. Jesus already told, told us the outcome. He will come back and require how much 
interest have you gained from that talent that I gave you? You go, Lord, I hid it. He says, take that wicked, slothful servant. Listen, we don't have to go that way. You can be a person of faith, get your prayers answered. Amen? And be doing what little thing God has called you to do. God has, God has called me to be a pastor, but look how easy he's made it for me. He really has. I can work a full-time job, and he gave me a little flock, and I can do this too. After work, I come and pray with people that want to pray. And I've done it for 30 years almost. It's possible to do it. Oh, I got a job. I know it can be done. I know it can be. For one is given by the Spirit of God the word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, of faith, and another the healings. Who knows what God would use you to do? Who knows? He takes the unlikely people that are not very smart, really, spiritually not very smart, in the natural realm not very smart, and he says, when you pray for people in this area, I'm going to hear you. And you might be going through health problems, and God wants to touch you, and you serve the Lord, and God touches you. You keep that anointing so many times, and that's the anointing that you have to touch other people. The battle you go through is where your anointing is at. Are you frustrated? And then God comes through. Maybe you need to pray for people that are frustrated and watch the peace of God come through or God come through for them. And it goes on here. He says, For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of one body, being many, are one body, you're part of the body. To every man, he says he gives it severally. And we're just talking about spiritual gifts here. We're not talking about the other things God would have you do. The spiritual side, everybody's got a gift. That's what you need to do. If you're going to serve the Lord, you want God to serve you, serve him. Just serve him. Amen? Think about it. And this is an extension here. Judas served the Lord and he stopped serving him for what? It was a self thing. Some people quit serving the Lord because of money. His was 30 pieces of silver. Sell him out. Rather than seeing the bigger picture, he sold him out. Satan was the most beautiful angel and he had an ability who was next to God. And he left all that for self. He left all that for self. And he beheld the, the, the beauty that God gave him and he says, I will take your place. Wow. Satan still floods us with that same deception today. I'll do what I want. This is what I think. Is that what the word says? Jesus says, he goes out the third hour and he says, he sees people idle and he says, come and work in my vineyard and I'll give you a penny for the day. So they go and they work in the vineyard. He goes out the sixth hour and he, and he does the same thing the ninth hour. And then he says, he goes to the 11th hour, and I believe this is where we're at in this country. I believe in this world, in time. I believe this is where we're at. And, and Jesus says, the good man of the vineyard says, at the 11th hour, he sees some people that are standing out, and he says, this is what he says to them, why are you standing idle? That was his question to them. Why are you standing idle? And you know what they said? No one would hire us. And he says, I'll hire you. So at the 11th hour, they went. They only worked for an hour. Bam. It was 12. It was over. The day was over at the 11th hour or 6 at night. And you know what? He says, your reward is the same as those that have always served me. Come into heaven. 
Why are you standing idle? That was his question. God help you and I that we not stand idle. Really. Really. 